Hello friends, welcome to Learners Planet. Our friends, this is our sixth session for real functions. In the previous session, we discussed uh, some problems based on uh, finding out the domain of a given function. In this session, we'll be taking some more problems based on uh, finding out the domain of a given function. Right? I'm sure you might have revised the previous session, uh, not only the previous, but all the previous ones. And you are having your paper and pen with you. So let's begin this one. Now in the series, uh, let's see this problem. Here this is uh, the function that is given and we have to find out the domain of this, right? Now what is the preliminary condition? Denominator should not be zero and the uh, expression under square root should not be negative, right? So x minus one should not be equal to zero, the first thing, then x square minus four. Now x square minus four can be written as x minus two into x plus two. Now that should be greater than zero. Okay, uh, equal to zero we cannot take because the term is in the denominator. So now what? It's minus two, it's two, right? So what is happening? Minus infinity to minus two, uh, minus two and two, both of them will not be included. Union two to infinity, right? So this will be the domain of the function. And now we have to see whether we are getting x is equal to one uh, in this domain. No, we don't have x is equal to one because uh, that lies between minus two to two, right? So that's already not a part of this, right? So precisely this is the final domain or we can say the favorable value of x for this function to be defined. Okay, so that's P. I hope you are getting me. Now let's do this one. Here we have to find out the domain of this function once again. So the all the three quantities are in the square root, right? So we'll be taking one by them, uh, one, uh, one by one, right? The first one, x minus x squared. That can be written as if I take x is common, it will be one minus x. So that should be greater than equal to zero, right? Or I can say x x minus 1 should be less than equal to 0. See, in case of inequality, if you uh, change the sign of um, the term, the sign of inequality is also changed, right? If x is greater than y, then minus x will be less than minus y, right? So, to use Vivico method, uh, what you do, instead of taking 1 minus x, you take variable first and uh, then the constant. So, the order will be followed in this manner, then you will not be making any mistake, right? But the sign of inequality should be changed because 1 minus x and here x minus 1. So, if x is greater than y, minus x is less than minus y, right? So, now this is 0, this is 1, right? So, a domain of this, only this will be 0 to 1. Both of them will be included because we have inclusive sign or equal to sign over here, right? So, from this, this is 0 to 1. Right? Now, from this, now 4 plus x should be greater than equal to 0. That means x should be greater than equal to minus 4 from the second one. And the third one, 4 minus x should be greater than equal to 0. That means x minus 4 should be less than equal to 0. That means x should be less than equal to 4. Now, we have to club the 3. Right? This is first, second and the th uh, third one. Right? All the three conditions should be satisfied. Okay? Uh, that means x should be between 0 to 1 as well as x should be greater than minus 4 as well as x should be less than equal to 4. So, all the three conditions are satisfied in this 0 to 1. Right? Okay? So, your final answer will be from 0 to 1 that is option T. Isn't it so easy? You just need some practice. Let's uh, take the next one. Now this one. Here 2 minus 2x minus x square should be greater than 0 or equal to 0. Right? So if I re uh, change the sign, it will be x square minus 2x. I'm sorry, x square plus 2x minus 2 should be less than equal to 0. Right? If I change the sign of inequality, I have to put up the negative sign over here. Right? So, x square plus 2x minus 2 should be less than equal to 0. Now, directly we cannot factorize it. Okay. So, to find out the two values of x, what I do is I use the formula method. Right. So, that's minus 2 plus minus 
b square minus 4ac. So b square is 4 uh, plus 8. So that's root 12. Root 12 means 2 root 3 by 2. So the two values will be uh, minus 1 minus root 3 and minus 1 plus root 3. Right? 2 will be taken as common and will be cancelled out. Right? So minus 1 minus right, uh, root 3 will be the smaller value and minus 1 plus root 3 will be the bigger value. So on the number line, minus 1 minus root 3 will be here and minus 1 plus root 3 will be here. Right? So we draw the curve and uh, since we want this expression to be less than equal to 0, that means we have to take the uh, lower portion or the bottom portion from the x uh, number line. So the uh, domain is minus 1 minus root 3 from minus 1 minus root 3 to minus 1 plus root 3. Okay. So x is greater than or equal to minus 1 minus root 3 and less than or equal to minus 1 plus root 3. So this is the correct choice. Okay. I hope you are getting it. Now this one. Here we have to find out the domain. Uh, this term x square plus 1 will always be positive. So, uh, it is in square root but whatever the value of x you put may be negative, may be positive, may be 0 but this term will be positive only. right? So we don't have to consider anything for this x or this uh, particular term. Now we have to take this one. Now x square minus 1 to uh, be this function to be defined x square minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. That means x minus 1, x plus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. So it's minus 1, it's 1. Draw the curve. We have to take the upper portion because it is greater than or equal to. That means minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity. Right? Minus infinity to minus 1. Uh, minus 1 is included. Union 1 to infinity. Right? So uh, we don't have option. Okay. See, this, is, this will be the correct choice. All the values from minus infinity to infinity we have taken. Uh, neglecting the values from minus 1 to 1. Right? Because only the values we have discarded is from minus 1 to 1. Right? So, this is the correct choice. This is the other way of writing the same thing. Okay? Now, this one. Uh, x square minus 1 is to minus half. So, this can be written as 1 upon root of x square minus 1. Now, very simple, x square uh, minus 1 can be written as x minus 1, x plus 1. That should be greater than 0, not equal to because this is in the denominator. Okay, so that's uh, minus 1, 1. So, the range is minus infinity to minus 1, union 1 to infinity. But minus and 1, minus 1 and 1 both will not be included, right? So, minus infinity to minus 1, union 1 to infinity. This will be the correct choice. In this case, 1 is included. In this case, minus 1 is included. So, that's wrong. So, this one is correct, right? Minus 1 and 1, both of them should not be included because that will make, any one of them uh, will make this expression to be 0. That means the denominator will be 0. So, the function will not be defined, okay? Now, friends, in this case, we have to find out the logarithm uh, domain of a function based on logarithm. Now, for that, uh, you must be clear with the basics of logarithm, right? The three basic things regarding the logarithm, I just uh, write over here. The first thing, uh, whatever, suppose this is the function uh, x to the base y, right? Now, uh, x should be always greater than 0. That means the logarithm of the negative value is not at all defined, right? y should always be greater than 0 and y should not be equal to 1. That means the base of the logarithm should be greater than 0 and even the base should not be 1, right? So, these are the three things that you uh, need to keep in your mind, okay? Okay, now, apart from that, uh, logarithm inequalities uh, are there. I just write it over there. Uh, okay, well, they have take care afterwards. The three things are important that you should be knowing. Index should be positive, base should be positive as well as the base should not be uh, equal to 1. Now, in this case, this function, uh, this uh, the base over here is e, right? So, base is not at all 1. That's pretty good uh, because the value of e is between 2 to 3, right? Now, the first thing, 
uh, for existence of this log this quantity that means this quantity whatever is this may be y may be uh, whatever this quantity should be greater than 0 right now this quantity is greater than 0 because we have the modulus sign over here so obviously this quantity will be positive so I write log x should be greater than 0 even it should not be 1 because uh, if log 1 uh, this will be 0 so if x is 1 then log 1 will be 0 then for 0 logarithm of this uh, logarithm will not be defined right so be careful this should be greater than 0 but it should not be the x should not be equal to 1 so I write it over here x should be greater than 0 over here and this quantity log x must also be greater than 0 and of course x is not equal to 1 so we have eliminated all the possibilities over here that means x can take any value from 0 to infinity except 1 getting my point from 0 uh, onwards that means all the positive quantities we are taking after that uh, we have discarded 1 because log 1 is 0 and if we get 0 over here that means uh, if this quantity is 0 for log 0 it is actually not defined right so even x should not be 1 so we have discarded it. so the domain of this function will be this okay our uh, friends in the next session will be taking more problems based on uh, finding out the domain of a given function and will be taking more problems uh, specifically of logarithm and exponents. Okay, so I'll see you in the next session once again. Bye-bye.